So what's going on guys kids here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best Dofus Touch class guide in 2024. This game in general has a bunch of fun and overpowered classes to play and we have a very unique variety to choose from. But the big question is which classes are actually good for you and the specific activities that you want to do. So I've done a bunch of testing and here are the best classes that you should try out. And just before we start I want to clarify that yes this video is sponsored but I'm not getting paid for saying positive or negative things about the game. All that they said is just to give a try to this game and see if I like it. So if you are interested then click my link in the description to check it out because new servers are launching on April 3rd and there is currently a pre-registration happening. So now is definitely the best time to start playing the game. And with that said, let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first class which is the unit Rough. These treasure hunters inflict serious damage on their enemies with their shovels and coins. They can also slow their enemies down, apply curses to them and even reduce their range. On top of all of that, they can summon bags or chests to protect or heal their allies. Overall, this is a great new player class because you will do high damage while giving yourself or other teammates buffs and on top of all of this, this class is pretty simple and straightforward so any player can quickly learn and adapt the playstyle. Then moving over to the second class, which is the Eka Flip. This class is your typical fighter, but with a taste for chaos. The effects of some of their spells are subject to change, but with a little luck, they can really pay off. The Eka Flip can unleash powerful attacks, easily make their way around the battlefield, and even move their enemies around. Overall, this is a fun melee based class that has a bunch of RNG around its main damage skills. So at the start, you will need to get used to it but because of it you can really win some very close fights. So then for the third class we have the Ayap. This class is very similar to the previous one as they are mainly warriors which can attack and inflict huge damage. They usually attack in AoE or focus on a single target to neutralize it as quickly as possible. Ayaps are effective at short range, they can jump to dive into close combat or make a smart retreat when the battle gets tough. Personally, my favorite thing is to push enemies around the battlefield and then just before ending my turn, running few squares away. So this way my enemies need to waste their movement points and potentially miss their attacks. Then for the next one we have the Sadira. This is a druid class that uses voodoo magic. They can summon dolls to injure and apply penalties to their enemies or heal and apply bonuses to their allies. They can also summon a variety of trees to protect themselves and obstruct their opponents. This class has much bigger range on skills than most other classes, so you can use it to your advantage by not always being in front of the enemy, but instead by using your positioning more strategically. Then for the fifth class we have the Sacrier. He is a berserker who isn't afraid to jump right into the battle. These extremely tough fighters place themselves onto the front line to take the damage in their allies place. The more damage they take, the more power they gain and the harder they are able to hit. They can also pull their enemies towards them or move quickly around the battlefield. I found that this class is another good choice for newer players as you can just take a lot of damage from the enemies and then return it twice as much. Most of your skills will be up close and personal, so the Sacrier always wants to be as close to the enemy as possible. Then for the next one we have the Fessa. This class is your main tank type of character who can significantly reduce their damage suffered by their allies or themselves. They can place glyphs on the battlefield that inflict damage or apply penalties to the enemies caught inside. As most tank rolls you won't be doing the biggest damage numbers but you will be able to withstand powerful enemy blows while protecting your team. So then in their turn they will be able to defeat the enemies for you while you will be doing one of the most important jobs which is helping and protecting yourself and your team. Then for the seventh class we have the Osamoda. They can summon a bunch of creatures that can attack, repel or disable their opponents. On top of all of this they can even strengthen, heal and take control of their creatures or even destroy them to make stronger their other summons. So overall this is by no means an easy class as you must navigate and have a powerful balance between support and doing damage. So if you want to play as a half support and half damage dealer, 
that can summon minions to do your bidding, then this is the class for you. So then moving over to the next class, which is the Shram. This is a stealthy slash assassin type of character, who can turn invisible and place traps on the battlefield. They can become undetectable to their enemies that are triggered as soon as an enemy is unlucky enough to step inside. Shrams also have spells that they can use to force enemies into their traps themselves. And in my personal experience, I recommend for the scram players to constantly keep moving, so the enemy never knows and can expect your next move, as anytime he moves, he can potentially step onto a trap and lose his advantage. So then for the next one we have the Kray. This class can set up multiple beacons on the battlefield that replicate all of the archer attacks around them. They can also attack their enemies directly with their arrows and protect themselves by pushing the enemies back. As an archer type of class, most of your skills can be used from range, so use it to your advantage. After every move, keep moving as far from the enemy as possible, while also dealing damage. I personally kept using the whole battlefield when testing out the Kray, and I found that in bunch of fights I never got hit even once, because after doing damage from the range, I just moved far away from the enemy, that most of the time he couldn't catch up to me to use his close range skills. So then now we have come to the 10th class which is the Pandava. Pandavas are warriors who can carry their enemies or allies to place them whenever they like on the battlefield. They have powerful attack spells and can get additional strength by drinking. They can even summon a barrel that attracts targets and heals nearby allies. Overall, as you can tell, this class gets a bit of everything, so you can deal damage, move allies, apply bonuses and much more. But with all of these options is a big responsibility, as the Pandava is not an easy class, but when you master it you can become unstoppable for your team. So then for the next class we have the Masquerader. He is a warrior who can put on different masks for different situations. He can easily push, pull or quickly close in on his enemies. He will apply powerful shields to themselves that can absorb multiple attacks. I personally really enjoy playing the trickster type of characters, and the Mask Raider definitely has plenty to offer in that department, because you can choose between teleporting, so moving your character closer to the enemy, then become immune to locks or perhaps even giving shields to yourself and your teammates, and much more. So then for the next class we have the Zeller and he is a sorcerer with the ability to manipulate time. He can trip up his enemies by preventing them from casting their spells, but he can also control their movement by teleporting themselves or casting spells through their dial. This is one of the hardest classes in this game, so I don't recommend it for a newer player, but definitely you can try it out as a second or even third character, as they are a ranged class that can use magic from range, so you will be able to do a crazy amount of damage and even heal your allies. Then for one of the last classes we have the Eniripsa. She is a healer who can steal health points from their enemies and heal their allies. They can even place cursed marks that apply penalties to their opponents or blessed marks to take care of their teammates. She can even summon and move vials that heal injuries or inflict heavy poison damage. So unlike the previous class, the Eniripsa is more of a life leech slash vampire type of character who can give heals by stealing it from the enemies. In my personal experience, I never really liked playing support slash healer type of classes, but she definitely intrigued me and I found it very fun because I could support my team by not only healing but doing damage as well. Then for the 14th class we have the Rogue. This class is very similar to a pyromancer who can place explosives on the battlefield. When two or more explosives are aligned, they will form a line that inflicts heavy damage on anyone along it. Rogues can pull or push enemies into their explosions or blow it up outright to finish their enemies off. Again, this is another extremely hard class to get used to, but I personally really enjoyed it because I not only had to use skills and see the damage numbers pop up, but I strategically had to increase my combos to make the explosions do even more damage. So if you like building up stacks and combining skills to make your damage even more powerful, then this is the class for you. And then for the last and final class we have the Fogger Knot. 
They are tacticians who can place turrets on the battlefield. These summons can attack, heal or move nearby targets. Pogernauts can also upgrade their turrets to improve their attributes, thus increasing their damage and health, which is very useful because as long as you can keep your summons alive, the more damage they can do in each turn. This is a very complex class, but as most classes, when you master it, you can become unstoppable. And that's about it. So with that said, thanks for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. As I said in the beginning of the video, this is a great time to download and play Dofo's Touch for free, as it is a very fun mobile MMORPG that is about to do a global relaunch and with it introducing new servers, reworked early game experience, plus 10,000 maps to explore, thousands of quests, items and monsters to conquer, more than 70 dungeons to complete and much more. So if you are tired of your traditional MMORPGs and you want to try out something unique and different, then definitely check Dofu's Touch out by clicking my link in the description. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support my channel and not miss any more amazing content. With that said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.